Hey Floss Tube, how is everybody? I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing well. Today is July the 22nd. It's actually my sister's birthday today. Happy birthday, sis. Hope you're having a good day. <laughs> I caught up with her last night. We all had a nice family get together for her last night, so that was nice. Um, I have really exciting stuff to show you today. Lots of things I've finished. I've finished some things. I've FFO'd my Cinderella piece, which you probably saw on the taggy thing. But anyway, I'll show you her. I'm really, really happy with how she's turned out. So yeah, really, really excited to hang her up. But I haven't done that yet. So I wanted to show you guys first. Um, what's been happening? Oh, the weather. It's freezing cold. I hate the cold weather. I really, really hate the cold weather. Everybody knows because all I do is whinge all winter long because I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it at all so I'm just wishing for winter to be over because it's been really cold and we've we do, it doesn't snow here but we do get a frost of a morning and ice on the windscreen and all that and oh, I just don't like it I just don't, I've never liked it and I never will and I hate being cold um and it gets really really hot here really hot in the summer but I don't care I hate the cold so yeah I'm looking forward to spring <laughs> um uh, what else has happened? Oh, my daughter had her tonsils out. She's 20 and she had to get her tonsils out. I tried to get them out when she was younger, but they wouldn't take them out. And Yeah, they finally just grew to an, a massive size. They were almost touching. They were so big. And she's always been a huge sleeper and always tired. And I knew it was her tonsils. And finally, yeah, they came out a couple of weeks ago. And she had a really rough time. They apparently when you're an adult it's really bad and it was really bad and she got a throat infection and everything that could go wrong went wrong and yeah, she she's had a rough couple of weeks. So I've been looking after her and but she's all good now. She's all back to normal and um having a little bit of trouble getting back to sleep when she wakes up in the morning like the rest of us normal people. So <laughs> it's obviously fixed her sleeping problem which is really good because she would sleep 12 hours and then have a nap in the afternoon if she sat down and did nothing she would fall asleep she was just always tired so and she's been that way since she was born because they were really big when she was little too but they wouldn't take them out so she'd get tonsillitis and anyway so yeah she's all good so I had that to go through and she'd never had an anesthetic before so I was really scared and it's a horrible thing to go through if your kids have ever had an operation you would know what I'm talking about it's not pleasant but She's good. She's all good now. She's out and about doing a thing. So all back to normal. Um, that's pretty much it. I don't think this one's going to be very long today. I know I've said that before, but <laughs> I really don't have a lot to show. I've got no haul, so it's going to be pretty quick, I think. I do have some finishes to show you, but I don't have a lot to show today. So Hopefully we can get through this one in a half hour or so. That would be really good, I think. Yeah, I know you like the long ones, but it would be good for me to get it done. No one's home, so I'm really excited that no one's home. So I can film it without feeling stupid. Because <laughs> I hate it when people are home. So no one's here, so I'll quickly... I'm a couple of weeks late, but I did that purposely because I had put Cinderella in to get framed and she wasn't back when it was due for me to do one so I decided no I'd just wait till till she was done and I had a chance and this is my chance it's Sunday it's my only day off and I've, I've been working still 60 hour weeks so this is the only chance I've had so I'm sorry it's a couple of weeks late but anyway um, I do just quickly want to say before I do anything else because I forget every video Thank you so much for all your comments and for subscribing and sending me messages and saying that you miss me when I haven't been doing videos. I really, really appreciate it. It kind of shocks me a little, but, <laughs> but it means the world to me. It really does. And, and it keeps me going and it keeps me doing the videos. And, you know, in the beginning when I started this, I, I never dreamed that you know, I would have subscribers and that people would actually want to watch and you all do and, and thank you so much, really. It, it is hard. It, it's hard for me to get time to watch all the ones I like to watch so I know <clears throat> it's time out of your day and, you know, I'm really bad with commenting too because I tend to put my phone 
I sit it on on what I'm working on and I just play and it just plays through my playlist and I just watch and I tend to be stitching while I'm watching and and I don't stop to to comment and I should and yeah I, I really really appreciate that you guys take the time and some that I get every every video are really long and I love them so please keep sending them because I read they mean a lot to me so thank you so much for that guys I really appreciate it ah now what what should we start with oh oh I have a quick shout out for it's not actually for a floss tuber it's for an Etsy store that I um come across and it's uh her name is Nicole and her Etsy store is called Journey of a Stitcher and I'm pretty sure she's an Aussie I think for all of us here in Australia I'm pretty sure she's an Aussie and she has like um Country Cottage and Plum Street and all of those awesome um patterns so if you're looking for somewhere in Australia to buy from, you may want to check her out. Or if you're from anywhere, you may want to check her out, what she has on her site. But it's a really good site. So um, I come across that. And also I just want to say hello to... Now, I meant to go and look up her name. I think her name is Alexandra or Alexandria. Hi, I'm just going to call you Alex. Alex? Because <laughs> she's Alex Stitches. Alex Stitches AW on the end. I'm not sure if she's trying to say she's Alex Stitch or <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> I'm not sure what she's trying to say. But she's stitching Cinderella that I'm going to show you today that I've had framed. And she's stitching it on 32 counts, so it's bigger than mine. And she's stitching it like a demon. You're st stitching it so quick, Alex. And we've been chatting a bit and... I sent her a picture of mine frame to give her a bit of a push to keep her going and she's nearly halfway through it. So she's Alex Stitch AW on the end. Alex Stitch AW on the end and she's on Instagram. And if you want to go and follow her, if you like that pattern, you get you could just check her out. Anyway, she's doing an awesome job and it's coming along really nicely and it's so cool to watch somebody else stitch something that I've stitched. I'm finding that really exciting to watch her stitch it and watch her progress so we've been chatting a bit so hi Alex I just wanted to say hi because we talk on Instagram and I just wanted to say hi and keep going you're doing an awesome job and she's looking amazing and I can't wait to see her finished um, and I think that's all the things that I wanted to tell you so let's do whips first now I'll just show you apples first because man the response I've had to this pattern I've put it on Instagram and Facebook pages and stuff and everyone's been asking me questions so I'm just going to quickly show it first where's my picture bear with me guys I had to do this in such a rush because I'm trying to get it done before anyone comes home <laughs> so this is this is apples now it's a Luca S see up the top there Luca S design and I'm not sure if it's I don't know, um, Moldova, where's Moldova? Yeah, it doesn't say. Maybe Russian? The writing might be Russian? Or, oh, I've got no idea. I'm so useless when it comes to this stuff. But it does look a bit Russian, I'm not sure. I, I got them in Australia, but I'm gonna go into that in a minute. Show you apples. So this is apples and I hope you can see that because I can't see a thing but this is where I'm at with it it's coming along really well I've um, come along and done over here I've done all this part and I also got the leaves all these leaves up here done since I've seen you last so yeah it stitches up really quick this piece but it's absolutely gorgeous and I love and this is why I think everybody else loves it too. I love how real the apples look. They actually look real like you could just pick them up and eat them. So I'm really enjoying stitching this. I'm doing it on Belfast and I love the Belfast because it looks kind of kitcheny, like it's um, French looking and that was, that was the look I was after. So it's 32 count Belfast linen that I'm stitching this on. And it is an anchor kit with all the anchor threads and I'm using the anchor threads I can't tell the difference between anchor and DMC I don't know about the rest of you but I can't tell the difference they seem the same to me 
So that's where I'm at with this piece. But I did just quickly want to mention, I had so many people on Instagram and on FlossTube asking me where could they purchase this pattern. And it was a, I was trying to explain to people on Instagram and that, but when you're typing, it's, it's really difficult to explain to people because <laughs> it's a bit of a long story. So I just thought I'd go, I'd just quickly tell you, for anyone that's interested in that piece, I'm just going to run through the other two that I bought at the same time. This is Plums. I have shown these before, but I got so many questions about them, maybe those people hadn't seen. So that's Plums I ordered as well. This one I ordered in a different fabric just to see if I liked it, but I don't like it. I'm going to stitch it on white. So this is, I think this is raspberries. Yeah, that's raspberries as well that I have with the little moth. I think it's a moth down here. I love this one too, and there's another moth over here. Um, really, really love these pieces, and they weren't the easiest thing in the world to get. What I had to do was I actually emailed Luca S. If you go, just go to Google and type Luca S., you uh, Luca S cross stitch, I think I might have put in, and it brings up the Luca S web page. But on their web page, you can't order the patterns. They're, they're on there, you can see them all, but you can't order from Luca S. So what I did was I sent Luca S an email and I just said, look, I want this, this, and this. Where can I get them from? They sent me two, um, she asked me where I was from, and she sent me two, I think there was two shops in Australia that would that distribute their patterns so I then emailed one didn't hear back emailed the other one Karen was her name and I'm so sorry but I can't remember the name of Karen's shop I'm sorry Karen if you're watching sorry but she was fabulous but if you are in the US or the UK or wherever you are if you go on and send them an email they will tell you the closest distributors for you to purchase the patterns from that's what I've been trying to tell everybody with this, you know, texting business and trying to get, get the story out. Now, a lady in the US messaged me and she asked me about it and I was telling her the story and she said that she ended up getting it on, um, I can't remember her name, that's really bad, I'm terrible with names, guys, I'm so sorry, I'm really bad with names. Um, she ended up getting it from... Um, Amazon. She got on Amazon and must have searched it on there and she found apples. Apples was the one that she wanted to buy but there must have been other ones on there because she said she was also going to order plums off there so um, she just ordered it on Amazon and I went on and had a look and it was really easy to find. The apples design is called um, I don't think it's actually written on here in English and I can't remember. Sorry, I can't remember what it's called. But if you if you just go on to Luca S, you'll find the names of all the patterns she has. There is a ton of patterns on there. And if you like vintage French stuff, you will love her designs. They are amazing. She has floral ones. They're really, really pretty. There's a ton on there I could order. But if you just do what I just said to do, you will find them. Otherwise, if you're in the US, you might want to just go search on Amazon and see what Amazon has with Luca S designs. But yeah, if anyone's having trouble getting it, let me know because I'll try and help you find it. But I think if you just do what I said, you'll have no problems at all. Luca S were great. They emailed me back within a day and I was able to get a hold of Karen who was fabulous. She ordered them for me. She didn't have them in stock and she ordered them. And I'm pretty sure she said Russia, that they had to come from Russia and I think it took a couple of weeks and then it took another week for them to get to me. So they're out. You can get them. You can get them, I promise you. But I had so many people on Instagram and FlossTube messaging me saying, where do I get that pattern? And I know what it's like. It's frustrating because you just want to get it. <laughs> but I just thought it's easier for me to explain it on here where you can find it. So that's where how I got a hold of them. So I just thought I'd quickly show them again. Oh, and I'll show you the back. These are how they come. They come in a kit. You get 18 count Ada. You get the um, anchor threads. And they're 
I can't remember how much. They weren't bad though. They were like $60 or something like that Australian, I think, which is pretty good because everything's in it. And the patterns are great. The patterns are really big, so they're really easy to see. The patterns are really good for these. So, yeah, if you're interested, that's how I got a hold of them, okay? But, yeah, I've done them, like I said, on the Belfast, and I'll be doing them all on the White Belfast. So, love Ada. Don't get me wrong. Ada and Count Ada it was really good for these. And if you're into Ada and you love stitching on Ada, I think the 18 Count would be really nice for these because it's quite small. But... For me, I wanted, um, I'm stitching it over two on the 32 count, two over two, two threads over two holes, because the Belfast was just much more, it, it reminded me of muslin, cheesecloth, that's what I was trying to, kitcheny kind of feel, so French kitchen kind of feel, so that's why I'm using that and not the 18 count Ada, and I'm so, so happy with it, so happy with my apples piece, I love it, I want to stitch on it all the time. Now, all right, I have, um, how do I explain this? If you've watched me from the very first video, I showed a almond, almond blossom piece. It was the piece that I was working on at the time. I had worked on it, I think, for probably a year, maybe, nearly a year. I had put a ton of work into it. It is a massive, massive design. Um, I'm going to show you, but... I just wanted to explain that when I started that piece, it was before floss tube. It was before I knew anything, really. I thought I knew stuff, but I knew nothing. I knew, as we would start say in Australia, I knew jack shit about cross stitch <laughs> until I started watching floss tube. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, I don't know anything about cross stitch. I thought I did. I'd been doing it for 20 years, but I knew nothing. So um, I had... I had only used 14 count Ada and I mostly only stitched massive designs, massive full coverage pieces and I did everything on 14 count Ada and I had started to grid up my big pieces and I used pencil. For about 10 years I used pencil and I don't know what happened with my 14 count Ada with that piece but I must have got a bit heavy handed or used a very dark pencil and I could see the pencil through it. Then I found floss tube and oh my God, a whole new world opened up and I thought I had stitched on it for a year and I wasn't happy with it. Once I saw what other options I had to make it better, I just put it aside and started stitching on a thousand other things and learnt so much in that first year that I, I was watching floss tube. I'd never stitched on linen or anything like that. I hadn't stitched on even weave, so I started discovering things and learning things and stitching on new fabrics. And after that, I knew that I was never going to be happy with that piece as much as I had completed on it. And if you go back to my first video, you can see it. Um, it was ginormous. It was really, really big. It's 500 and something by 500 and something stitches. So on 14 count Ada, it was ginormous and it had gotten to a point where it wouldn't fit on my frame. I'd been folding the end of it under and I couldn't do that anymore because I'd started to come across. I um, don't know if that makes sense, but anyway, it didn't fit on my frame. I ordered a bigger frame. When the bigger frame came, it still didn't fit and I just, I just wasn't, my heart wasn't in it anymore. You guys know about that. If your heart's not in it, you lose the joy. So I just literally packed it aside and said, I'm not working on that anymore. Um, so I had plans to put it in my lounge room above my lounge in a prime spot in the house. It was going to be, it was going to go there. It's blue and green, my favorite colors. Um, but I just wasn't happy. So I put it aside. And then last video, I showed you the four seasons piece from, uh, heaven and earth designs. And it's a massive design as well. And I said to you guys, I've done six months now without doing a full coverage piece. And I was really starting to get the itch to start one. I've finished a lot of smaller things. I was going to do that all this year. That was my plan to not do a full coverage this year after death by cross stitch and Cinderella last year, I was going to do smaller things and get things finished. Bang, bang, bang them out which I've done for the first half of this year. I've got two more finishes to show you today. Yep, I'm, I've been banging them out. But then you've got to frame them, and then you've got to find somewhere to put them. And I don't know where to put stuff that I've finished, so I just thought, 
for me, it's about, you know, doing it, finishing it, where am I going to hang it in the house or who am I going to gift it to or... Anyway, I just feel like I'm stitching and stitching all these things and I don't even know where I'm going to put them and it, full coverage was calling me. It was really calling me. So I pulled out Four Seasons because I'm dying to start that. I went to a retreat and one of the girls at the retreat was um, stitching it and Jan was stitching it and I wanted to start it. I was really itching so I bought the fabric and I showed you guys that piece in the last video. Then when I kept getting the itch and the urge and I thought, I've still got that almond blossom there. And the lovely Sandra sent me the piece of fabric that I needed to start it. I had decided that I was going to restart it, almond blossom, and I was going to do it on 25 count like I did Cinderella and Death by Cross Stitch. I was going to do it one over one on 25 count. I figured it would be smaller, it would fit on my frame. And the detail would be incredible. And I just kind of shoved it aside and went, I'll worry about that later. So when I was deciding about starting a full coverage piece, I, I started thinking about it and I went, mm, oh, geez, I, I'm going to start one of them. So then in my head I knew it was either going to be Four Seasons or it was going to be Almond Blossom. But because I knew exactly where I wanted to put Almond Blossom and I've seen, I stitched a year on it, I know how good it's going to look. And I just thought, oh, which one do I start? Which one do I start? And I ended up asking my daughter and she said, do Almond Blossom, Mum. You've got a spot for it. You know where you want to put it. You know how awesome it's going to look. So I started it. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going, oh, my God, this is mammoth. It is humongous. And you guys know I like to see progress. I like to, you know, I like to feel like I'm getting somewhere on my piece and this is huge. It's I, I've roughly worked out if I work on it for two weeks of every month and then I do either a week or two weeks on another piece, a week each on another piece or two weeks on another piece. If I do two weeks every month, I think it's probably going to take me two years. And you know, I stitch a lot. Everyone keeps saying I'm a fast stitcher. I'm not a fast stitcher. I stitch a lot. <laughs> I stitch I ignore everything else and I just stitch because I love stitching. So Sundays for me are my day. That's today. It's my stitching day today. I, I'll wash and do stuff like that in between, but I'll try to stitch all day if I can because <laughs> I just love it. So I'm figuring I've just done two weeks on it. So I'm going to show you how much progress I've got in two weeks. I've got a fair bit of progress on it, but I have to say... I'm back in love with it again and I'm really, really happy that I did decide to start it. Um, I, I think it's going to be amazing. Um, what I think was also probably putting me off a little bit is because I only have two or three whips and I've explained this to you before, I show them on here and it's like, oh, that's all I've got to show you is two whips. And I think that was putting me off working on a big piece as well because I was thinking I've got nothing to show you guys. I'm just showing you the same thing, you know. Oh, I've done a bit more. I've done a bit more. It's not very exciting. But I have to do what I'm passionate about, right? I have to do what brings me joy. And big pieces bring me joy. They really do. So what my plans are is to do two weeks on this every month. And I'm actually going to try three whips. So I'm going to have apples, which will be my second whip, which I'll work on for a week. And then I'm going to have another whip that I'm going to work on for the other week. And that will be, at the moment, um, Enchanted Mermaid because I started her. I haven't touched her this last six weeks because I had two finishes and <laughs> I was trying to get my whips down a bit <laughs> because, yeah, my head just starts to, you know, want to explode. So I've now got three whips. So I'm going to do two weeks on Almond Blossom, a week on Apples and a week on Enchanted Mermaid. And I'm just going to see how that goes, how that works. What it's going to mean, though, for you guys, is it's not going to be very much to see. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but it's all, you know, I have to stitch what brings me joy. Um, I can't just stitch what I think you guys need to see or want to see. So, you know, I'm sorry it's going to not be very exciting for the next couple of years. <laughs> but I have to stitch what I love. So this is Almond Blossom. This is it. Uh, again, one of those things where you print it off and you think it's all blue, but it's really not blue. It's more actually green. You'll see in a second. So 
it's more green, but blue and green are my favourite colours. So it's just going to be to die for. To die for. This is a, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, oh, Van Gogh. Van Gogh painted this. So it's a Van Gogh painting and it's called Almond Blossom. Now, I've had people ask me over the years about this piece as well. Just Google arm and blossom cross stitch and you will find this pattern. It is still out there. I have Googled it plenty of times because people have asked me over the times and you can still get it. You can still get it anywhere. It's very easy to find. So, um, not too many colours. Yeah, I guess that's a fair few colours, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's, it's got a fair few colours. Um, size, I will tell you exactly for anybody who wants to know. Because it was first video, I think I told you. Um, 500 by 395 stitches. So it's not as big as, as the other one either. So that kind of made me lean towards this one a bit too. <laughs> it's huge, but. And <coughs> I have done a fair bit on it. But you will see now the size of this thing. And how long it's going to take me. Here we go. So this is what I've done so far. Yay. Yeah, see what I mean? It's not very exciting. Now I do have my gridding thread on there. That's why it's sparkly. But that's just, yeah, that'll come out when that page is finished. So I, I grid one page, finish the page, then I take the gridding out and then I grid up the next page. So just so I can see how it's progressing. So it is a little bit hard to see much at this point. But if I grab this it's actually that corner there up here that's where I'm at that corner so that's where I'm starting in the top left corner and I'm just going to work my way across but I know that you guys being stitches can look at that and go oh my god that is going to be amazing it's going to be amazing and I'm so excited I I know it's going to take a long time and it's not going to be very exciting to show you but this is going to be awesome and you guys know I finish stuff so I'm determined I am so determined that this is going to get done but yeah it's going to take a while <laughs> so <laughs> and I started it and I'm going oh my god what am I doing you know that I go through that process because they are massive and they are you know so much work and I'm starting it and I'm stitching the first little square and I'm going holy moly what am I doing but I know I know I'm going to love this and I did put a year's work into the other one. Um, I have gifted that to a lovely lady named Irene in Malaysia who started talking to me because of that piece. Um, I think I may have mentioned earlier that I would give it away but or do a giveaway or something if I decided uh, and then I was going to turn into cushions and I was going to do all these things but in the end... Um, the lovely Irene and I have become really good mates and she texts me and messages me all the time and we found out that we have the same birthday, we're both left-handed. I can't even tell you, the amount of things that are similar between the two of us is so weird, it's really strange. So I have sent it to her, she's received it. She had actually started it because she'd seen mine and she started it on... I can't remember the count, but she was doing it um, 10 stitch. And she stitched about that much, I think, and then went, nah, I don't like it, and was really disheartened. And I could tell she was really disappointed. So I have sent mine to her, my 14 count piece that's got a year's work on it, and she loves it, and she's going to stitch it. So she's going to finish it. So I, I'm hoping that, yeah, we're going to stitch this together and... Yeah, so sorry, I, I've sent it to Irene. If any of you want to know what I, what I did with it, it's gone. It's gone. So, yeah, so anyway, that's where I'm at with that. So I have just worked for two weeks on that. And you can see just there is the bottom of the grid. So I'm, I've nearly done a page in two weeks. So I'm over half of a page in two weeks. So I think there's 20-something pages, but... Some of them aren't even full pages, so I don't know. But I'm guessing roughly about two years, maybe. But anyway, I've started, guys, and I'm on a mission. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And I'm crazy, I know, I'm crazy because I'm looking at it going, you're mad, you're mad, you've finished all these pieces, you could be getting all this stuff done. And I just went, oh, this is what I love. This is what I love. So I'm just going to stitch what brings me joy, right? That's what we, we need to do. We need to stitch what brings us joy. So I'm going to work on that. Okay, so that's that one. I'm not going to show you Enchanted Mermaid because I haven't stitched on it anymore. Um, this week will be apples now. From today I will be stitching on apples and for a week and then I will stitch on Enchanted Mermaid for a week and I'll see how much I'm getting done on them. If I don't feel like I'm getting enough, I'll take one out and I'll just work on one the other one for two weeks and then I'll bring the other one in when I finish that. Like, I'll still be finishing things because I will always have a smaller one going so that I've got something to show you at least. Okay, all right. Um, FOs. I have finished two pieces. Two. Um, I've done uh, Tree of Hope. Tree of Hope is finished. And I have no idea where I'm going to hang her. I'm thinking maybe in my room, but I haven't framed her yet because I just got Cinderella framed and they're so expensive. So I'm just, you know, spreading it out so it's a <laughs> Because they cost a fortune. But I, I can't frame them. I, pff, there's no way in the world. I wouldn't even attempt it. Um, where's my picture? Here it is. So here is Tree of Hope. If you haven't seen this before, this is a Mirabilia design. And just a little teaser for you. I'm at 1,400 and something subscribers, I think. When I get to 1,500 subscribers, so every 500 subscribers, I do a big giveaway. And this is going in my big giveaway. She's going out to whoever gets my giveaway. So you need to stay tuned for that because I'm not far off it. So it may even be the next video I might be doing a big giveaway. And she'll, she'll be in that. So this is her. All done, guys. Ta-da! I really enjoyed stitching her and I'm so happy with it. The colours in this are amazing. There's so, like what you're seeing on here does not do it justice at all. It is so bright and so pretty and sparkly and I, if I just go like that you'll see beads everywhere. There's beads all through it in the dress, in the flowers, in the hair, in the bird up here. There's beads everywhere and then there's also beads up in the tree can you see that yeah you can see that beads up in the tree the beading didn't take me long at all probably a week maybe to get it all done I beaded it all at the end and I did I had a little bit of back stitch to do but it was just a joy to stitch this it really was and it really didn't take me long I think I started it in February and I finished it in June the end of June and I stitched on other stuff too so it really stitched up quick this if you like Mirabilia's I don't think you could go wrong with this piece because the colors are amazing and I'm gonna put that in a white frame and I'm not gonna put a border I'm just gonna put it in a straight white frame and I think it'll be beautiful I think it'll be beautiful so she's done guys so yeah if anyone's got any questions about it Feel free to ask me, happy to answer, but this was the first time that I had beaded on something. First time that I had done beading on a cross stitch project. I'd done a Mill Hill kit, but I'd never beaded before on, on a big piece like this. And I used um, the invisible thread, which boy oh boy, that was a little bit tough, I must say. Um, threading your needle, it's a little bit hard. And I don't know whether I could really show you properly but it said in the instructions to go up through the hole with the thread, put the bead on and go diagonal down and that was it. And when I did it, it didn't feel to me like that bead was really in place, like it was moving a little bit, like it was loose and I, I didn't feel good about it and the beads were on an angle and I didn't like it. So what I did was I went hope I can explain this. So I went up through the, the bottom left hole, through the bead, down through the top right hole. Then I just did a cross, like up through the bottom right hole and I went back through the bead again 
and down through the top just like you would do a cross but as I did the cross I went through the bead in both directions does that make sense and what I've ended up with where's a good place to show you oh, I don't know what I've ended up with is that my beads I don't know whether you can see I've got this up as Oh, I don't know what you're seeing, but my beads are straight up and down. So if you would prefer that, can you see? Yeah, I think you can actually. My beads are straight up and down with the hole going through that way. Because I did through the bead and through the bead as I did the cross, it ended up making my beads sit that way not like that and I preferred that and again I reckon that would just be a taste thing that would just be what you like or don't like you know it, but if you prefer like me I liked all of them standing up like little soldiers all neat then and and it just felt like they were they were really secure as well so I did that but you know I think again that would just be a choice on how you would prefer them to sit but for me, they had to be sitting up straight like little soldiers. So that's what I did with my beading. And I will do it again on Enchanted Mermaid because I really liked it like that. <sighs> Is that one done? One more whip, one more finish to show you. Oh, <laughs> told you. Been getting shit done. Girls, guys, getting shit done. So I've done... Um, my other one is... Part one of the 13th Colonies. I'll just quickly show you them all in case you're watching for the first time. Hi, if you're watching for the first time. <laughs> uh, part one. This is the one I've just finished. 13th Colonies. Part two. These are by the bay, the 13th Colonies. I love these. I don't even, I could not tell you why. But even my daughter saw this finish the other day and she said, oh, I really like that. And I was like, oh, hallelujah. They like my cross stitch. <laughs> this is it. All done. This was the easiest stitch I have done in a long time. This was so quick. But how pretty are they? I think they're really pretty. And I'm going to put that in a white frame and I think I might give these to my mum. I don't know. It depends on whether I can part with them because I really, really like them. I think they're really pretty but yeah that was so I couldn't tell you how quick I started that in April and I think I did like four sessions on it or three sessions on it so three lots of two weeks so six weeks I had that done really didn't take me long at all and it was a bit monotonous the stitching if you're not into if you like a bit of confetti in your work this wouldn't be for you because it bored the tears out of me but I had to do it because I loved it but stitching it, yeah, was a little bit. But have a look at that. God, it looks good on here, doesn't it? <laughs> Even if I do say so myself. <laughs> it looks good. It looks a lot better on here, actually, than it does in real life. It looks really pretty on here. But, yeah, I'm going to stitch the other two and hang them all together. And if I don't keep them, they're going to my mum because we have a van where we go for holidays and they'll get hung up in the holiday van because I think they're very holiday looking, aren't they? And I think my mum would really like them. It's just whether I decide that I can part with them. <laughs> if I can't, I'm keeping them. But, yeah, I think she'd really like these. And the fabric is gorgeous. Star Sapphire Linen, and it's 32 count, and it's the prettiest linen. It's a little stiff for linen, but it's really good to stitch on. So, yeah. Done, guys. What do you reckon? I'd love to know what you guys think of these these designs. Do you really like it? Because I do, and I'm not even sure why I really like it, but I just think they're pretty. So I'll give you a little close-up there. And like I said, really easy and quick to stitch if you're interested. Really cute little sheep and sailboats and... Um, there's a lot of by the bay patterns that are similar to this. This one you can stitch all together in one big piece. You can join the three of them up on these. Well, it will be this edge, but on that edge, 
they match exactly. So you can you can stitch them all as one piece. But for me on 32 count, that made it 36 inches long. And I just went, oh, that's huge. And it'll only just fit on my frame. And yeah, I like working on a frame. So yeah. Done by the bay. So I've done one, so I'm going to pack that away for a while and I'll pull out the second one when I feel like it. When I feel like stitching the second one, I'll pull that out and stitch that. That's it, guys. I told you it was going to be shorter today. Don't have anything else to tell you at this point. Um, I'll try to be back in two to three weeks again because I was a bit late on this one and I like to try to do them on my RDO. I want to have the lights coming in through the window so I'm all... There's all lines from my blind. Sorry about that. Um, I yeah, I'll try to come back in a couple of weeks, I think, and try and do the next one on my RDO. So I won't have a lot to show you, but I just want to get back on track. So it'll either be in two weeks or six weeks, depending on how things are going. Um, what else? Oh, there was one other quick thing. Uh, Nicole Buckeye Stitcher, she messaged me. Hey, Nicole, she's she's awesome. She messaged me to tell me that she'd found the book. Um, I forgot to message you back, Nicole, that she'd found Pat Ryan's book for me, the Antique Sampler book by Pat Ryan, that I I was chasing. And it's on, uh, I think she found it on Amazon, and I can't order from Amazon. So I did go on and have a look, and it is there, but I'm just going to keep looking, Nicole, and see if I can find it somewhere else on eBay or something. I, I haven't really even had time to search for it. I really haven't. But I am going to make an effort to really look for that book because I really want to show you guys that book. I think that book will be amazing. I haven't seen it. I just think it's going to be amazing. <laughs> so I'm trying to get my hands on it. So if anybody sees it anywhere that's not Amazon, can you let me know? Can you send me a message? Because I'm after it and I really want it and I'm going to get it one way or another. Um, I read some reviews on it and yeah, it's a really good book I believe. It's all about antique samplers and it's just a history thing. I've got, I'm a real history buff. So yeah, I really want that info. Now in saying that, if anybody out there has found any books or knows of any books that are on um, the history of stitching, I would love to know what those books are called and I will try to get my hands on them because... Um, I've really, I'm a real, like I said, a real history buff um, with anything, anything that's history I love. Um, there's a lot going on in the world at the moment. If you are into history, they're finding th that things are a lot older and that we've been here a lot longer than they first thought. Uh, so I'm right into all of that. I watch YouTube and all that kind of stuff. So I I'd love to get my hands on some really nice books that get, that talk about the history of cross-stitch. So if any of you know of any other books that aren't Pat Ryan that you think I might like, could you please send me the name of the, those books? Um, I'm on uh, Instagram as TLC Stitches. I haven't got around to changing my, my floss tube name. The kids want me to change it from Teresa Craig to TLC Stitches, Tender Loving Care, because TLC are my initials. Teresa Lee Craig is my name. So they want me to change it on my floss tube and I really should do that today. I'll try and make an effort to make it TLC stitches. If not, it'll be under Teresa Craig. So if you could send me a message and let me know. Um, I am also on Facebook if that's your only option. I am on Facebook so feel free to come and chat to me on there on Messenger or wherever you'd like to. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it guys. I, I'm, oh, oh, I forgot to show you Cinderella. <laughs> Oh, I'd have been so annoyed at myself if I'd forgotten the fancy forgetting that. Oh, my goodness me. Okay, here she is. <laughs> oh, my dear. Now, I, I'm so excited to show you her too. I can't believe I forgot. Um, now, I'm going to have glare issues, so I'm going to try really hard. I don't know if I can get it all in. Can I? Oh, there she is. Now, on here, because I was looking at it before I started filming, this frame looks a little bit gold. But if I put that in there like that, you can see it's silver, right? It's silver. So, yeah, and I just got the two mount, mount pieces of cardboard in there. They're the colours that I picked. I was so excited when I went to, to see my framer because 
he had this frame and this was exactly, exactly what I had in my head. So I was so excited. I said to him, that's it. That's exactly what I've got in my head. And I didn't think he'd have it and he did. So I was really relieved. And uh, yeah, he just helped me to work out what colour mat board. I knew um, it was either going to be black or grey and I thought the little strip of, oh, this light. I thought the little strip of black would be better in um, the inside and then the grey on the outside. I was tossing out between that and black, but I'm really, really happy with her. How awesome does she look? I can't. Hang on. There we go. Now if I can just get rid of the glare. That's about it. That's that's the best I'm going to get it, guys. Sorry. Um, I have a big front window and I have to leave it open. Otherwise, I'd be sitting here in the dark. So, um, yeah, that's her done. Yay! So she's going to be hung up in my room here for a bit just so I can wear a stitch, just so I can look at her for a little while. And then I think once I'm sort of over it, because <laughs> all I've done is stare at her <laughs> last week, when I'm sort of over it, then I think I'll put her up in my bedroom because my bedroom's got a bit of grey in it and I think she'll be pretty in my bedroom eventually. But for now, she's going to be downstairs where she can be really shown off for a while. This is so heavy. But yeah, she's done, guys. You know, like, we, we put so much work into these. Like, I've put, I don't know, eight months of my life into her. So she was done on, she's a Hayde pattern called Cinderella. The designer's name is Alexandra Dore, and she's still available on there. This is the mini version. So I did her on 25 count even weave, and it's opalescent, which you can see. Um, when she's on the wall, that it sparkles, but you can't see it on here. Sorry about that. Yeah, but she she was 25 count even weave opalescent fabric, and she took me about eight months, I think, if I worked it out just stitching on her. I think it was around about seven or eight months. So, you know, that's pretty good, I think, for um, how much time I... Oh, yeah, that's the best I can do, guys. I can't show you any better than that. Um, yeah, so done. Oh, I can't believe I nearly forgot to show you. How ridiculous is that? That's what happens when I'm trying to be organized and I'm rushing and I'm trying to get everything ready and I'm trying to do it before anyone comes home and I get so frazzled in the end because I'm, I haven't had time to really think things through. But yeah, I didn't even write her down on my list of things to show. That's why I forgot because I thought I won't forget that. <laughs> and I did. But yeah, really, really happy with her and oh, stoked, absolutely stoked. I'm sorry I can't show you very well, but I'm, I'm pretty sure you get the idea. But yeah, wow. And when you do frame them up, that's when you can really appreciate them, huh? Like, yeah. yeah. You have to frame your pieces, guys. You have to frame your pieces. Don't put them in a drawer. Get them out. Show them off. My family really likes this. <coughs> I did say to my daughter, uh, this is probably one of the most favourite things I think I've ever stitched. And I said to her, uh, this is mine. I've stitched it for me. It's the first thing I've stitched for myself in 20 years, I'd say. I've always stitched for other people and the kids and that. And I said to her, I am entrusting this to you. When I'm gone, my great-grandchildren better be fighting over who gets this. <laughs> And you're responsible for making sure that this doesn't end up at the thrift store. <laughs> and my family had better be fighting over who gets great grandma's Cinderella piece. <laughs> she said, I promise, I promise. So she, yeah, she really loves it. So I think she'll keep it for a while once I'm gone. But <laughs> for now, it's mine. But yeah, I did say to her, this better not end up at, at the cheap shop or I'll be filthy. <laughs> <laughs> there's other ones I don't care but this one yeah someone had better be fighting over it so yeah she's gonna she's gonna she's been entrusted to take care of this one so very very special to me this one and I didn't sign it either and I probably should have but anyway done guys so I'm gonna leave you with that and I'm gonna say goodbye and I will see you guys in hopefully two weeks 
hopefully two weeks, but maybe not until six weeks. It, that's probably more realistic. Let's roll with six. Sorry, I know it's a long time between, but 60-hour weeks, that's, you know, that's just how it's going to be for a while until this um, overtime slows down. But I'll catch you all again soon and take care, everybody. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all of your support. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye, guys.